Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to make a video about whether or not the gods are real. The idea came from a conversation I had in the comments a couple weeks ago with a viewer and something that George R. R. Martin recently said in an interview. Before we jump into it, don't forget to stick around to the end so you can learn about the book giveaway I have going on now. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. In a recent video, I mentioned that I thought the gods were just tools of the major religions in Westeros and, you know, beyond into Essos. They're just tools that they use to explain this unknown kind of quality that the magic in this world has. So just to be clear, I, I do believe there's magic, but I don't necessarily believe that the gods are responsible for it. So as you know, there's tons of religions throughout this world, just like there is in our world. In Westeros, the most popular religion is the Faith of the Seven, which is a religion that was imported to Westeros by the Andals when they invaded. Members of the Faith worship a single deity that has seven aspects or faces, and it's basically magic-less, like the uh, seven faces are the father, the mother, the warrior, so on, and they're just like ideals of, you know, they represent, say, judgment for the father, motherhood and nurturing for the mother. So they're just sort of like these ideal principles that are, you know, broken up into seven parts. The other two religions that are popular in Westeros are in the Iron Islands, they worship the drowned god. And then in the north, we know they worship the old gods. Now, I'm not going to get into all of these different religions because there are, besides these, there are a lot of them. And that could be a whole different video. But we also have a different religion that follows the Lord of Light, Rolor. Now, this is going to be the religion I use for my description here because there is some very clear magic involved in this faith, which we've seen from a character who's pretty prominent throughout the series. Of course, I'm talking about Melisandre, but we'll also talk about a couple of other red priests and priestesses as we get through this. So, R'hllor is known as the Lord of Light or the Heart of Fire. And the basic idea behind this religion is that there's the Lord of Light and the Great Other. It's dualistic in that there's a, you know, a good God and then there's a bad God. I don't think bad and good are the best terms we could use here, but they're, you know, they're opposites. Let's say that. And one is favorable and the other one is basically death. The Great Other exemplifies ice and death. So the conversation started because I had made that comment about the religions just basically trying to explain all this unexplainable magic. And the commenter made a very good point that how could I say that these religions or gods behind them weren't real when we see that they really do stuff? Mostly from Melisandre because she does factor into the story so much. George R.R. R. Martin just did a really long interview. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen it. But he recently did a convention in Mexico where there was a Q&A period. And one of the questions he was asked was which religion would he belong to if he lived in Westeros? What he said was really interesting. So I think I'm going to mention that and then we'll get into all of what we know about Melisandre and some of the things that she's done. So George R. R. Martin said that, well, you know, and I'm going to paraphrase, obviously, but he said, well, you know, we could look at the faith of the seven. It's the most common religion. And when you join that, then you have community and you're not considered an outsider and so on and so forth. But then he said, you know, that we have this uh, faith of a and, you know, they're pretty cool because they have actual magic. And, you know, he goes on to say something to the effect of, I always thought I would join a religion if they had real magic in the real world. So that's confirmation if we actually needed it. I mean, I didn't need it, but just to throw it out there, that there is magic involved with the faith of R'hllor. So in our story, we have a fanatic of this religion. Melisandre is a fanatic, right? So let's look at what we actually know she's done. When we first meet Melisandre in the TV show, we're not really sure what to think because she's doing this whole big thing with Stannis where she's burning the, you know, the wooden statues of the Seven and talking about this prophecy. And then she has him pull this flaming sword out of a fire, which seems kind of hucksterish. And in fact, it actually is like she, this is just a setup. This is really no magic involved other than making a sword glow with fire. But as time goes on, she starts to do some things that seem pretty valid, especially the shadow baby. Like this is indisputable, right? This is magic. They're a little bit different in where it happens in the show and the books, but it basically happens the same way. It's not a show only thing. I mean, she has 
a baby that's a shadow and it goes off and it kills someone, right? So at that point, you're starting to think, well, then, you know, this woman really is magical and this god, R'hllor, is really something different than these other gods we've known before. We also know that Melisandre is much older than she appears. In season six, we got this uh, reveal where she takes off her glamour the ruby that she wears around her neck, and we see that she's really a whole different person without it. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but just to make a note that that may not be the only thing she uses to make herself look young and attractive. There's a scene in the bathtub where she's not wearing the ruby, and she's talking to Selyse, which can be a little bit confusing, but she's also talking about potions and powders and smokes and things like that. So whether that was misdirection or just a continuity error, you know, I don't really know for sure, but I would just say that she does have magics to conceal her real identity. Some other things that she's done is she's leached the blood of a king from, in the show, Gendry, in the books it was Edric Storm, but then she throws those in the fire for the three kings and eventually all three of them die. This is pretty convincing stuff, but there was a war going on, so you could maybe say that, hey, these guys would have died anyways. Either way, it's a pretty good thing to get Stannis on board, and and I would say any of us would be hard-pressed to say that she wasn't magical if we were in her presence. The biggest thing she's done, obviously, which hasn't happened in the books yet, is she brought Jon Snow back to life. She resurrected his dead body. I think we're going to get a lot more details about what happens there, but, you know, it's important to think about she didn't even know that this was possible until she met Thoros, so it's not something that she's done in the past or really even believed in, other than what, you know, what her fanatical faith would tell her. So again, this is definitely magical. The guy was dead. There's really no question. It wasn't trickery like, you know, the Stannis thing when she was burning the statues of the Seven. So she's a combination of a trickster who also has some magic. But can we attribute this magic to the Lord of Light? The one example that I'll get into now is the Shadow Baby. Melisandre is a religious fanatic, a red priestess of the Lord of Light. But she's also a Shadow Binder. Shadow binding is not related to R'hllor in any way. This is something that she probably learned in a shy where she's from. So before she resurrected John, this was her big magical feat, but it shouldn't be confused as something that people who are red priests or red priestess can actually do. This is Melisandre specific, if you will. The one thing that she does do besides resurrecting John is she sees visions in the flames. This is a Lord of Light thing. There's a couple problems with this, though. Sometimes what she sees isn't very clear, and she makes the wrong decisions based on what she thinks through the filter of her faith. Obviously, Stannis is still alive in the books, but that doesn't lead me to believe that he might be Azor High. She was just wrong about this. In the show, she now believes Jon is Azor High reborn, and in the books, there's a passage where she's looking in the flames and she wants to see Azor High, and she says all she can see is snow. George R. R. Martin capitalized the word snow, so it leads us to believe that she's headed that direction there as well. The other problem is there's other people who get visions in the flames that directly contradict what she's seeing. In the show, we saw the red priestess Kinvara, who believes that Daenerys is the Azor Ahai reborn. In the books, there's another guy named Makoro, and he's basically the Kinvara because he believes that Daenerys is the Azor Ahai reborn as well. So I'll just leave you with this and because I'm going to have to make this into a two-part video. But if there is a Lord of Light and he does show his faithful visions in the flames, why would he have different priests, or in this case priests that says, see contradicting visions? In part two, I'm going to go into some theories about that. And I'm going to talk about some of the other stuff, including the blood magic and the shadow binding. And then we're going to figure out whether this is just magic or if there really is something to this god, R'hllor. So a quick update about my release schedule this weekend before I get into the book giveaway. Saturday, tomorrow, we'll have the spoilers video. It's a big one. And then Sunday, I'll be doing part two of this video. So make sure that you check back. If you haven't already, next to the subscription button, you can click that little bell and that'll give you a new notification whenever I upload a new video and you won't ever miss one. 
And one more thing, I wanted to do a shout out for a channel that you might not have heard of. It's called House McFarlane. He's been putting in hard work making Game of Thrones videos and is trying to grow his subscribers. If you like my channel, I think you'll like his too. And I know how hard it can be to grow a channel. So why don't you guys go over there, click on the link at the top and help him out. You can never really get too much Game of Thrones and it's always good to support the channels for people who are making good, unique content and put in real time into it. Now for my book giveaway. When I reach 28,000 subscribers, I will pick one person who has commented on the videos where I mentioned this giveaway and I will send them the 20th anniversary edition of A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. It's a sweet illustrated special edition and I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out if you haven't seen it yet. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video or any of the others where I mention this offer. That's it for now. Make sure you check in Saturday for the spoilers and Sunday for part two when we get into the rest of this idea of whether or not the gods are real. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.